buying health insurance is a huge mistake. In today's video, I'm gonna show you why if you're an entrepreneur who has health insurance, you need to cancel it right now. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you could save hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime by canceling your health insurance, even if you have huge medical expenses. And if you're lucky enough to have good health and you never have huge medical expenses, you could literally save millions of dollars over your lifetime by watching this video and implementing what I'm about to show you. I'm also gonna show you how in the next 10 years alone, you could save a minimum of $50,000. Again, even if you have huge, huge medical expenses. I'm gonna walk you through the math. I know it seems a little bit difficult to believe right now, but stick with me. In the next few minutes, I will prove it to you. All right, now I know a few of you may have gotten mad. You might be ready to thumbs down this video and leave me an angry comment just because I said that. It's almost like I told a Christian that they shouldn't pay their tithe, telling people to cancel their health insurance. And that's because most people have what I call religious mentality towards health insurance. They're not doing a calculation of what the premium is, what their likely benefit is. There's no math involved in their decision of whether to buy health insurance or not. They just say, most people, you gotta have health insurance, but they don't say at what price. What I want you to take away from this video, if you learn nothing else, is that buying health insurance should not be a religious decision like that. It should be a mathematical decision. Now, if you wanna become financially free, you have to look at health insurance from a smarter perspective. The perspective that you should use is the same perspective that big businesses use when they buy insurance. Now, when big businesses buy insurance, they don't just say, I gotta buy insurance and buy insurance at any cost. They do a very sophisticated mathematical analysis of what their premium is, what their risk is, how much benefit they're likely to get from this policy, and their risk tolerance. What would happen in the worst case scenario, and if there's other alternatives that they could use in the worst case scenario to be okay. So maybe you're not gonna agree with the specific math that I'm gonna show you in this video, but regardless of whether you agree with my numbers, you should be following a decision-making process like this. If your decision to buy health insurance or to not buy health insurance doesn't involve any math, you're probably going about it the wrong way. Do some type of calculation and have that investor mentality when you buy health insurance. All right, so let's run through the reasons why you should not buy health insurance or why you should cancel your policy. The first reason why is that you are statistically guaranteed to lose money when you buy any type of insurance. And this is kind of controversial, but in a sense, it's also just a mathematical fact. After all, insurance companies, any type of insurance company, is not a charity. People think that they're saving money on medical expenses by buying health insurance, but if you think about it, it cannot work that way for everybody overall. After all, insurance companies collect your premiums, then they pay out your claims, and they have to have a big chunk of profit left after that, which represents extra money that the average person is paying them. Not only do they have a big chunk of profit, they also have tremendous operating costs. They have to pay all their executives. They have to buy a big office building. They have tremendous regulatory costs. They have hundreds of thousands of employees. And who's paying for that? You're paying for that if you pay these health insurance premiums. And that's just how any type of insurance works. You always wanna buy the minimum amount that you can with any type of insurance because you're statistically guaranteed to lose money. Now, while you're statistically guaranteed to lose money with any type of insurance, here in the United States, health insurance is subject to certain rules which make you even more statistically guaranteed to lose money if you fall into certain groups. What I'm about to share with you applies to the United States, but many other countries have similar rules in their health systems, so this may apply to you if you have a similar health system. In the United States, most of our healthcare regulation was passed under Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. Now, when the Affordable Care Act was passed, certain changes and regulations went into place with the health insurance marketplace. I'm not gonna give my personal opinion on those changes in those videos. I'm just gonna give my perspective on what you should do in reaction to those changes. Now, with the Affordable Care Act, it became illegal for insurance companies to charge a lot more and to charge the full representative price for certain high-risk groups. That had some good parts to it. Uh, people that had pre-existing conditions, people that were older, women, and other groups that traditionally paid more for health insurance were able to get health insurance for less. 
but that also had some negative parts. Certain groups had to pay more because after all, that was the only way for the insurance companies to stay in business. If you fall into one of the disadvantaged groups, you might want to especially consider canceling your health insurance policy. All right, so what groups are advantaged and what groups are disadvantaged under the Affordable Care Act? First of all, the Affordable Care Act subsidizes people with low income. So if you make $10,000 or $20,000 a year, buying health insurance is almost certainly going to be a good idea for you. But if you make more than $49,000 a year, then you get no subsidy on your health insurance. And really, if you're making more than $35,000, the subsidy is pretty minimal. That means that you are subsidizing other people. Your insurance is more expensive because of your income level. If you're making more than $35,000 a year, that means you're more likely to not want to buy health insurance. Here's another group that's disadvantaged, which might describe a lot of you guys watching right now, men. Now again, under the Affordable Care Act, companies were limited in terms of how much more they could charge women than men. But what a lot of people don't know is that women have substantially higher health care costs than men. And this is just a fact. Uh, most of these health care costs come due to pregnancy, which men just due to our nature cannot biologically go through. And you can see the good intentions behind this. A lot of women had huge pregnancy costs and huge medical bills, much higher insurance costs. So they wanted to level the playing field. But you got to realize that if you're a man, that playing field is leveled at your expense by making your premium cost higher. If you're male, it's more likely that health insurance is going to be a bad deal for you. Next, if you are younger, meaning that if you are younger than 40, health insurance is likely a bad deal for you. And again, this just comes down to how the Affordable Care Act works. Older people before the Affordable Care Act had very high health insurance premiums, so people wanted to lower those premiums. The way that they lowered it was by making younger people pay more. So if you're younger, it's more likely that you're going to be losing money in the long run by buying health insurance. And finally, if you are healthy, then you are less likely to benefit from having health insurance. Now, this is a little less cut and dry than the other one, so I'll flesh this out a little bit for you. Let's say that you're 30 years old, you're in excellent shape, you hardly ever get sick, you don't smoke tobacco, you don't drink that much alcohol, and you're not obese. You're at, you're at a good body fat percentage. I would say that would be a general description of what a healthy person looks like. But let's say you do smoke tobacco, or let's say you're overweight, or let's say you have a chronic condition like diabetes, or let's say you do frequently get sick. If you do fall into one of those groups, you'll likely benefit from the Affordable Care Act and other people will be subsidizing you. But if you're healthy, then you are subsidizing other people. So let me run you guys through a little bit of the math of how this works and stick with me. It's pretty simple and this will save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in the long run. Now, I just looked this up, as you can see on screen right now. According to AARP, the average Obamacare silver plan or the medium plan that most people buy is $388 a month for a 27 year old. And I think that would be pretty representative of a lot of the people watching this video right now. Now, this would be $4,656 per year. So what do you get for your four grand per year? Well, according to eHealthInsurance.com, an insurance marketplace that aggregates a lot of this kind of data, the average deductible for an Obamacare silver plan is $4,292, and the average out-of-pocket costs are $7,776, again, according to eHealthInsurance.com. What does that mean exactly? So that means that even if you have insurance, you are out-of-pocket four grand or more on a single procedure, even if you do have, say, a $5,000 procedure, that means you're on the hook for more than four grand of that cost. If you do have, let's say, $100,000 of medical costs in a year, then your maximum out of pocket would be nearly $8,000. So you really have to have high medical costs for this insurance to even kick in. This is for the silver level plan. There's also the bronze level plan and the gold level plan. Uh, for the bronze level plan, the premiums are lower, but the deductibles are much higher. For the gold level plan, the premiums are much higher and the deductibles are lower. So you can go up and down depending on how much you spend on your premium. But regardless of which type of tier that you're in, the math is very similar because of this. All right, so I wanna run you through a little bit of a scenario analysis, which you should be doing for yourself before you buy any type of insurance. Let's say you're a 27 year old and you would be paying about that much for an Obamacare silver plan. Now, let's say the next 10 years are just totally fucked for you. Every year you get sick. 
you get various minor illnesses every single year for the next 10 years, and you have $4,000 every year in medical costs for the next 10 years. After that, you get cancer and then you have $100,000 in medical costs or some astronomical amount in medical costs. How much would you need to have in medical costs after 10 years to make your 10 years of premiums worth it? Well, I'll run you through the numbers. All right, so on screen right now, you can see a compound interest calculator. You can use this to run your own numbers. So let's say if you did pay that $388 premium for 10 years, over the course of 10 years, you would be making $46,000 $560 in payments. So most people would think if you had medical expenses more than that, you benefit from the insurance, but that's wrong. What you have to keep in mind is that if you do have this money and it's 10 years before you make a serious claim, you could invest the money and you'd be earning returns on this money. Now, a typical rate of return that you could expect, which is a little bit aggressive, but still realistic is 8% per year. So we'll plug these numbers into the compound interest calculator, as you can see on screen right now. Let's say that you made $46,560 in premium payments. If you did that every month for the next 10 years, you would have $67,449 after 10 years. So that's one very important factor you gotta consider when you're buying any type of insurance. It might be years before you make a claim and those investment returns you're foregoing need to be considered in your calculation. Now, here's the next thing that people need to consider, the deductible. Let's say, again, every single year you had medical expenses that are $4,000, terrible, every single year. You had $40,000 in medical expenses during this time. How much did you benefit from insurance during this time? The answer is zero. You would not receive any help on your insurance because of that high deductible. Only if you had something really catastrophic happen to you would that insurance kick in. Now, again, keep in mind that this is the deductible and not the maximum out-of-pocket cost in one year. Most of the time, if you have something catastrophic happen to you, let's say if you were diagnosed with cancer, it's not all going to be from one procedure. Likely, it's going to be from multiple different procedures, each of which will have a new deductible applied to it. So the real number that you should be considering is the maximum out-of-pocket cost. So let's say 10 years down the road, catastrophe hits, you have a stroke or you get cancer or something happens where you have a huge amount of medical costs. How much cost would you need exactly for buying this insurance to be a good decision for you? I'll run you through it. So on screen, you can see this calculation right now. You paid $46,560 in premiums. Accounting for your investment gains, you forewent $67,449 over the course of the last 10 years. Again, assuming you had $4,000 in medical expenses where insurance did not kick in every single year. So most people would say if you had expenses more than $67,000, you're better off with insurance. But again, that's not correct. Because again, this insurance would not kick in until you hit your maximum out-of-pocket costs. You would actually have to spend $75,225 in that last year to benefit from having health insurance. So that kind of gives you an idea of how this works. You really have to experience real disaster, much worse than the average person, to benefit from having health insurance. But I know what you're thinking. Disaster could happen. I mean, you could get cancer. You could get a stroke at a young age. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. So for peace of mind, isn't it still good to have health insurance? No, it's not. And I'm going to show you why. So this number would really only apply to emergency costs. Let's say if you got a gunshot wound or if you got in a car accident and you needed to have a procedure the next day. Most medical procedures, though, don't work like this. Uh, let's say if you needed chemotherapy or if you needed a heart procedure or something like that, it would be the type of thing where it doesn't need to happen that hour. Usually it's something where you could wait at least a few days before having the procedure. Because of that, there are many loopholes in the Affordable Care Act that you can use to get insurance after you get diagnosed with something serious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a few of these loopholes that you can have in your back pocket. Now again, hopefully you don't get a stroke at 40, hopefully you don't have a heart attack or anything like that, but this might give you a little more peace of mind when you cancel your health insurance policy because you know if the worst case were to happen, you can always buy insurance after you get sick. So I'm gonna run you through a few of the loopholes that you can use to get insurance after you get sick and if the worst case scenario did happen. The first loophole, the simplest and easiest, is to get married. 
If you get married, you qualify for a special enrollment period and you can get insurance at the same rates as everybody else after you get sick and when you have big medical costs coming in a few days. Now, I know a lot of you guys, you're already in a relationship or you're already married. Maybe your wife wouldn't appreciate you getting divorced and getting married to someone else to save money on health insurance. So this may not be an option for everybody, but if you're single, then there's no reason why you couldn't just get a prenup with your buddy, get married for one day, get your insurance and then get divorced. It's completely legal. You can be completely out in the open about it and you can get insurance in the worst case scenario after you get sick. Now, let's say that you don't wanna get married to save money on health insurance. The next thing that you could do, which you're seeing on screen right now, is you could move to a different zip code. And you don't really have to move. Again, you could just coordinate with your buddy to change your official address to his house in the next zip code over, continue unofficially living in your own house and officially change your address. And again, you now qualify for a special enrollment period. And let's say, worst case scenario, you don't have any friends that'd be willing to help you out like this. There's still a loophole you can use to get insurance after you get sick, and that is hiring yourself. Now, this loophole is a little bit more complicated and you'll wanna look into exactly how this works. Basically, if you start a company and you employ yourself in a W-2 and you don't offer yourself an employer plan, but instead you offer yourself reimbursement for an individual plan, that again qualifies you for a special enrollment period, even if you hired yourself. So hopefully that helps you guys shed a little bit of that fear-based religious mentality towards health insurance unless you got shot in the head or unless you got in a really serious car accident, which could happen, but are very, very unlikely, you could get insurance after the fact, after those big medical expenses already came up by using one of these loopholes. Now, even though I've clearly shown you guys how this makes financial sense, a lot of you young, healthy guys out there might be thinking, but what about everybody else? When I pay my health insurance premiums, aren't I helping out everybody else and making the world a better place? And the answer is, unfortunately, no, you're not. You're actually making the world a better place by paying out of pocket. And here's why this is. Because most people in the US have health insurance, health insurance costs have skyrocketed. The reason for that is that most people aren't aware of the ultimate price their insurance company is paying, which they're ultimately paying through their premiums. Because this ultimate price is disguised, healthcare providers have the freedom to basically charge any price they want because you're not even aware what they are ultimately charging. Now, if more people pay out of pocket, healthcare providers are gonna be forced to bring their costs down because people are gonna shop around and they're gonna be much more price conscious. Healthcare providers will also have to be more transparent. You'll know what you're actually paying when you get the procedure. It won't be a hidden cost that you don't see exactly what it is, but what you do pay through every month through your premium. And finally, keep in mind that if you do pay out of pocket, you actually pay cheaper rates than someone who is insured. So even though that insurance company is kicking in money, you're gonna save money overall by not having health insurance and you will be making the world a better place. All right, so those are some reasons why you may wanna cancel your health insurance policy. But I will be the first one to admit this advice does not apply to everybody. Some people definitely, definitely should have health insurance. And I'm gonna run you through a few of the reasons why you might wanna have a health insurance policy. Now, the first reason why you would wanna have health insurance and the reason that's gonna to apply to most people out there is if you have a job where the employer covers a good amount of the cost. Now, even for some people where the employer does cover, say, 50% of the cost, it may not be worth it. But for most people, I would say it is worth it if the employer is kicking in a good amount, especially if they're kicking in 60, 70, 80% of the cost. This is really free money you're getting every month with this subsidy. So most likely, if you have a job with a generous subsidy from your employer, you want to take advantage of that and you want to have health insurance. Let's say even if you don't have a job that provides you with health insurance, but your income is very low, if you make 10 or 15 or $20,000 a year, in that case, it's almost certainly worth it for you to have health insurance. The reason for that is you're gonna get a big subsidy when you go on the Affordable Care Act's marketplace. Now, let's say if you're already sick, if you frequently have serious medical problems, if you smoke tobacco, if you do drink alcohol heavily, if you're overweight, and especially if you're obese, or if you have any type of pre-existing condition which makes it likely you'll have a lot of medical expenses. In that case, you definitely, definitely wanna get insurance. It's probably gonna be more than worth it for you. If you are 50 years old or older, 
Again, your premiums are subsidized by younger people, so it's probably worth it for you to get insurance. If you're female, your premiums are subsidized by men. If you're young and healthy and you do have other factors in your favor, it still might not make sense for you to get insurance. But if you're female, and especially if you anticipate having a baby soon, you should definitely, definitely get insurance. So, those are some caveats. Those are some people that should get health insurance. I included that just to make sure that if you fall into any of those groups that you know health insurance might be worth it for you. But I know the majority of the people watching these videos are younger guys who are entrepreneurs. Most people watching these videos don't have serious pre-existing health conditions and most people don't have employer-based coverage or will soon be losing their employer-based coverage if you're watching these videos. So for the majority of you out there, I think health insurance is a bad idea and that's why I made this video. Now, here's one final thing I need to tell you that's super important if you do make that decision to cancel your health insurance policy. You still gotta make your premium payment every month. The only difference is you're gonna be making your premium payment to yourself. Now, here's the reason for this. It's very unlikely that you get in a car accident or that you get a gunshot wound or something happens when you have huge medical costs. But it can happen, anything can happen, and we can't predict the future. So because of that, you need to self-insure. Every month, rather than paying that premium to the insurance company, what I want you to do is to pay your same monthly premium that you were paying before you canceled to yourself. Now, let's say if you're an advanced investor, if you're very financially disciplined, then you can just keep that money in your same bank account. But for most people, I know it's gonna be a temptation to dip into that money, let's say if you wanted to purchase a new car or there's something you really wanted. But this has to be a reserve that is sacrosanct, which you don't touch for any reason besides medical expenses. That's the only way that canceling your health insurance and self-insuring is really gonna work. So what I want you to do is to get your monthly premium and to put it in a bank account at a different bank and to throw away the debit card. Now, this is very important because it'll establish a barrier between you and that money. I want you to set up an automatic monthly draft from your bank account, same exact amount as your insurance premium that just goes into your other bank account. It'll be completely painless, just like it is right now, just like paying health insurance. The difference is you still have that money. Once you've done this for a few months, you can start to invest that money. And the benefit of that is that you'll earn a return and it places yet another barrier between you and that money. You can still get it in an emergency, but it will be less tempting if you just wanna buy a new car. So this is what I do. That's what I recommend that you do as well. And one final thought for those of you out there who are thinking that this is risky. I want you to keep in mind that paying big health insurance premiums does carry a risk too. What if you paid these big premiums for 20 years, you had less than four grand in medical expenses every year, the premiums get higher and higher and higher every year, and after 20 years, you have no money and you can't afford your premiums anymore because they got more expensive and you wasted all your money. What would you do in that scenario? On the other hand, just think about if you did have good health for 20 years, you had less than four grand a year in medical expenses, and then you have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. At that point, 20 years down the road, is when it's most likely you'll have those big medical expenses. So if the likely scenario does happen, you'll have a huge amount of money in the bank to cover big premiums at that time or to come out of pocket for bigger costs. All right, so that's what I got for you in today's video. I ran you through some numbers. Even if you don't agree with these numbers, I just wanna show you what the decision-making process for buying insurance should be like. Run yourself through a worst case scenario and see if you really would benefit from buying any type of insurance product, especially health insurance. Lose that fear-based religious mentality and think about health insurance like you would any other investment. Now, if you wanna get your bank account on point so that way you can have a big cash reserve and so that way you can feel comfortable canceling your health insurance and knowing you can health insure, I recommend you pick up a copy of my book, The 15 Steps to Profitable YouTube Marketing. Unlike health insurance, this book doesn't cost you anything. You can get it completely free on my website. In the book, I show you exactly how to build money-making YouTube campaigns. I show you how to script your ads, how to film and edit your ads, and how to manage your campaigns through Google Ads. Start to finish, I show you exactly how to do the entire process. Now, you could use what you learn in this book to run YouTube ads for a client, or you could use it to start your own business and to advertise your own product. One way or another, if you have a job right now and you're looking to become an entrepreneur, this book could be your ticket to doing that. 
So if you want to check it out, go to 15stepsbook.com or click the link in the description. Pick up your free copy of the book today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.